Welcome to Get Out of Your Own Way, the masterclass interview series on how to eliminate the beliefs, excuses, and distractions that are keeping you from tackling your most ambitious goals. I am your host, Stephanie Ray, the Accountability Evangelist. I help accountable people achieve their most ambitious goals so they can live a life of fulfillment and make a tremendous positive impact on the lives of the people they choose to serve. Today, I am pleased to feature Carrie Jones, owner of Indigo Tones and personal color analyst. Carrie, owner of Indigo Tones, a personal color analysis studio based in Rochester, New York, is an industry leader and innovator. She has developed her own unique personal swatch books and botanically based cosmetics and provides a wide variety of colorful clothing and accessories to clients all over the globe. Indigo Tones allows her to combine her passion for teaching, natural alternatives, career development, personal enrichment, and color. Carrie, thank you for joining me today. Thanks, Stephanie. I'm, I'm thrilled to be here. That's wonderful. Well, let's start by telling everybody a little bit more about your story and how you've gotten out of your own way. Well, the, the first part of my career was in, the, was in a corporate environment. I was a human resources generalist. And I was interviewing and hiring a lot of people. I was working with uh, employees on their own careers. I was, I was training and developing. And I realized that that wasn't really where my heart was. And even just moving out for the first, the first getting out of my own way, there's been many over the years, but the first one was really saying, you know what, I can help people in a different way. I can tap into all the things I learned and all the things I know that people need, but kind of give, give people a whole different perspective. And I became aware of color analysis at the time that I was doing human resources consulting. And I remembered how color so significantly impacted me when I was interviewing. You know, I would remember somebody because of a color they were wearing either positively or negatively, or I would just completely forget all the, the stream of people that came in in the, in the simple black suit. So I took a leap and uh, 16 years ago, I started a very unique business. I would say, and it's a fun business too. You know, I, you and I met, I guess it was 10 years ago when I got my first color analysis done. And so much has happened since then. Do you just want to comment a little bit about the journey from kind of wherever your beginning was with what actually wasn't even Indigo Tones at the time, right? You had a different name and then you changed that. Yeah. So, I mean, really the topic of this series is so perfect for me because I've, I've literally had to get out of my own way over and over and over and over again. Uh, so many blocks, you know, starting off with, with first of all, just you know, jumping into a new business and, and really there were no mentors in the field that were going to do things the way I was going to do it or that had sort of the same vision. I did have an art history background from college, but I hadn't really done anything with the creative field or with, with color in particular. And so uh, when I first started the business 16 years ago, I really didn't know much about all this stuff, except I did have some of the some of the art history and color harmony um, theories in the back of my head. And what happened was I started off just sort of, you know, coming up with a name with with, uh, you know, my cousin who I started the business with at the time. We were both HR people who thought, wow, this would be really fun. We learned how to do it together. And we were just picking things at random that felt fun. We called ourselves, we put, we put a color in our name. And what happened was, as I started to get into this, I realized this is fun, but this really works. And this is something that I knew would be a tool for people to help them understand more about themselves and to help them differentiate themselves as they were, you know, looking for jobs or dating or just, you know, exploring any other aspect of day-to-day -day life. But I also just realized how scientific it was and how I wanted to apply sort of my more scientific analysis way of, of, of putting it into this. So the business has completely evolved since 16 years ago. And then 10 years ago, when you came in, it was sort of like, I could figure out maybe what somebody's colors were, but I wasn't as, as, adept at understanding 
how it all fits into their entire life and how to create a real wardrobe that works because the color is is a big part of it but it all it, it's encapsulated with a lot of other things and really the goal is to help someone find out their colors as part of exploring who they really are and how to express that um and so i really really moved from just sort of, hey, here's your colors, go off and have fun to here's your colors. And now let's talk about how you're gonna, how you're gonna use them to create a lifestyle and a wardrobe and a closet that completely works for you and allow you to be more of who you are without trying it to make it be about what's on trend in fashion or what everybody else is doing or you know, what, you know, all these buzzwords that everybody needs a little black dress or everybody should be doing this because there is no everybody really should. Um, I try to help people to really express their own individuality. So the topic we're going to talk about today, empowering you to wear color would suggest that some people shy away from that. And maybe they're always aware of wearing black, for example, is, have you found that? And if so, what, oh, absolutely. I think the biggest hurdles that we're facing right now, first of all, um, you know, is that the fashion industry puts out a lot of black. It's easier. I mean, I, I read an article that even during the pandemic, that it was a big risk to invest in different colors. So a lot of a lot of uh, clothing manufacturers are just buying bolts of black fabric because it's simple. So there's a, a there's a push to not wear color. Um, people are afraid of color. If you don't know what colors suit you, it's terrifying. And it's hard to, you know, clients over and over and over and over again, whenever I meet with them, they say, well, I know I look good in this color, but they think they can only wear that one color. Like that's one color that looks good on them. Or I know I look good in blue, but the truth is everybody can wear blue. And it's everybody can wear a version of pink and everybody can wear many versions of green and, and yellows and that kind of thing. It's just which versions. And so what people don't understand, they don't understand that. And so what happens is with a color analysis, it opens up so many new avenues for wearing color. And also too, we just don't know how to do it. So you know, people are reluctant, say, to wear, you know, this is my purple, but people are like, I, I don't know how to wear purple. And what am I going to do? Am I going I, I don't want to look like, <laughs> I've heard this many times. I don't want to look like Barney the dinosaur, you know? <laughs> and so it's, it's, it's all inclusive in terms of that's a big hurdle for most of us. And, you know, we're Stephanie, where you and I live in the Northeast of the United States, we have a darker climate. I mean, right now we're in the darkest month of the year and it's dark and people, people feel more, you know, like they tone themselves down. They tone themselves down 12 months of the year, but especially during this time of the year. And so it's hard to imagine that you would want to wear color 12 months of the year. Um, and so I find especially women and especially women of my generation we are toning ourselves down. We've been taught to tone ourselves down and we certainly do it with the colors that we wear. Right. Well, for me, as you know, it just so happens that December is my month, right? Yes. So it makes sense for me to wear dark colors as a dark winter, but it wouldn't make sense for everyone to wear dark winter colors in December because not everyone has the dark winter palette. Right. Exactly. And so you and I are sort of the opposite. You are a dark winner, which I think resonates beautifully with December. And you couldn't be illustrating it any more perfectly. You've got the winter background. You know, I like to tell my winter clients like you, you know, think of Snow White as your as your inspiration, you know, and you're, you're illustrating that perfectly. There's a crispness to it. There's a coolness to it. There's a quietness to it. And you look amazing in black and white. That really resonates with you and the and the and the little hint of the red lipstick, where you know I see eighty percent of my clients are wearing black and white as a default because they don't know they don't know anything else to do. Now for me, I'm a lighter I have lighter coloring and my my month that I resonate with is June. So what I'm you know illustrating today is that even even in the middle of the winter, 
I can still wear clothing that's appropriate for the for the weather and the fact that it's cold out, but I can still be in my June inspired colors. And that's what I want to empower people to do. If you know what the colors are, and if you have access to the kinds of clothing and the styles that resonate with you, you can do this. But it gets overwhelming if you don't understand all the different pieces of it. Right. And I think that's, I'm glad you brought that up because in my color analysis and the refresher that you and I recently did, you provide a lot of education. And I, I think people should know that there's a lot to this. And there's a reason why someone would call someone like you because you're the expert here that understands how to put all this together and what, what goes together, what doesn't, uh, all those things. And also how you show up differently when you wear colors that are yours, right? And I think, so I just wanna to touch on those two things. First, the education piece of it, just to give people an appreciation for, you, know, you spent a lot of years becoming an expert. So it's not as simple as just going to a store and you know, kind of going through the racks and picking out colors that you think look good. Uh, there's some intuition there, but there's a lot of education behind it too. So actually we'll start there and I'll move on to that, the other one next. Yeah, so I absolutely consider myself an educator. I mean, the color analysis, the actual testing part of it is only about maybe 15, 20 minutes. And the entire experience for one person would be about an hour and a half to two hours. For a couple of people to, that come together, it might be two and a half hours. And I actually encourage people to come together because I do think of it as an educational experience where you're seeing on each other, wow, those, I had a mother daughter yesterday. Wow. Oh my gosh. That looks so beautiful on you. And I can see how your green looks great on you, but it looks terrible on me and how they can, they can compare and contrast. And so the, the analysis testing experience is done with a series of drapes where I put them up to the face and we see how they, um, the, the, the face and the eyes and the hair, if it's in its natural state, take on the color. The right colors will make your skin look clear and they'll make your eyes pop and they'll make you, you resonate as a whole with the colors. The wrong colors will tend to bring out splotches and you know scars and, and redness on the face and they'll diminish the eyes and they'll make the overall person look dull or overwhelmed by the color. And so when it's right, like the way you're resonating right now is you and your background all are presenting as a unified whole. And so what I try to help the clients understand is that these, you can see where these colors are making your face and your eyes and everything look great. And then once we figure out what the colors are and everybody can wear um, you know, like I said, a lot of different versions of the color, but once we figure out what those colors are, then how are you going to incorporate into your own lifestyle? So Stephanie, you and I determined that we have a pretty different style. I tend to be more romantic. I have curly hair. I have a curvier shape to me. So wearing shawls and wearing sort of more old fashioned kinds of jewelry and things like that suits me, but it wouldn't suit you. You have a crisper, cleaner look that looks better with a crisper, cleaner hairstyle and that kind of thing. So we talk about, um, it's very, very holistic. We talk about the style. We talk about how different body shapes will suit uh, different types of clothing. And then the last part of it is, is that I really believe that when someone is wearing the right colors and their hair is the right color, which we talk a lot about hair color too, because Another thing that we have to get over is thinking that we all need to color our hair and change our hair. Our natural hair color is perfect. So once we establish, you know, what, if you're going to color your hair, what tones would be correctly, what would be correct, what the, the cosmetic portion is that you need very little makeup. And by a lot of times what people are doing is they're putting on the wrong colors, their hair's wrong. And in order to feel good, they're loading makeup on. And that is not necessary at all. In fact, minimal makeup is necessary once, once everything's right. But if you're gonna wear makeup, a few simple um, thing, a few simple applications of the right colors in a very balanced way on the face can really make all the difference. And it's almost kind of imperative to do that. Right, and that's, and that's another great point about simplifying. I mean, that's something I learned from you recently when we did the refresher, you know, I, I was re-energized, right? So, I, you know, we met over 10 years ago 
And, you know, over time, I kind of got away from honoring my colors. And so my closet kind of got out of control in, ter in terms of it getting away from my palette. And so when we had the refresher and I was like renewed, you know, excitement about this, as soon as we came home and I, di I didn't want to do anything else because I got back from the color refresher, I, I audited my wardrobe and edited my wardrobe and I gave my clothes away, even stuff that I just bought, frankly, because it was so not the right fit for me. So I gave it to my nieces and my daughters, et cetera. And now I can see everything in my, in my closet and know exactly what I have. It just has make it, made my life so much easier. Now I did not have tons and tons of clothes before then, but it was still kind of stressing me out because I couldn't really pair things together that worked well. Now, every single thing I grab works. So well, I, I mean, it, it's picture. amazing too. The, 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 the shirt that I'm wearing, I've actually had for years. And it is my color and I love it. It fits me beautifully, but I, I haven't really had a, a lot of things that go with it, or it hasn't actually been, it hasn't been something that I wear often, but every time I did a closet edit, I said, you're keeping it. You love it. It fits you beautifully. And it is your color. Well, just a few weeks ago, um, I was given this, this shawl. It was actually my mother-in-law's who has passed. And it is absolutely, it's my colors, it's perfect. It's, it's, you know, it comes from Ireland where she was from and I'm an Irish American myself. And I just love everything about it. And look at, here's the shirt that goes with it perfectly, just sitting there in the closet waiting for it. And so I don't buy into the idea, if you haven't worn something for a year, get rid of it at all. I believe that if it's, if it's right for you and you love it, it's almost like you're building a collection. And now what you've done, Stephanie, is you started with a really, really great collection that now you can start to add to. And, and what'll happen is I will be able to exponentially create all kinds of outfits with this new shawl because every single, the blues in here, the greens, the purples, they're all my colors. And I'll be able to mix it with all kinds of things in my closet. And so it's not like having one outfit, you know, and if I travel, I can take this one thing and, you know, and incorporate it with a lot of other things. It's really pretty amazing. I actually want to show you the swatch books. Um, oh, yeah. So get a sense of the difference between our swatch books and how there are really lots and lots of colors on all of our swatch books. So we can, um, you know, your swatches, for example, your colors are dark winter, which I think of as December here in Rochester. So they're darker, they're deeper. You know, black is a really good neutral for you. Uh, white is a good neutral. Gray is a good neutral. You don't look good in tans and khakis and those kinds of things, but you have a whole variety of colors here. For me, as a light summer, my colors are much lighter. They're more like the colors we would see in a, in a summer garden. And so you can see where there's just so many colors to choose from that putting together, together a wardrobe actually becomes easier, not more difficult. It's amazing. Yeah. And it, it's, it is fun. But as you said, it's more than that. I think it's how you show up. Like I've had I don't know, a little bit more spring in my step since I edited my clothes and since I know what to wear. Like so excited to do the interview with you today. As I said, I can't wait to wear my proper colors and apply the makeup the way that you showed me to. Uh, you know, that makes a huge difference, especially now as well for me, you know, I'm trying to get my brand out there and help people serve more people through this summit. And in order to have the confidence to do something like this, which can be a little stressful, right? You know, you're interviewing people, you're on camera, People will have potentially lifetime access to this interview. You know, I, I want to look good and feel good. And having the right colors is, is so key to that, which is why I think it's so important. I'm so glad that you were willing to speak about this topic. You know, a, a lot of people, uh, when, I, when I think about what I, what I actually do, you know, what I'm called an image consultant. And the way that I've built my business is by telling people I help them find the right colors. But I really believe that, you know, over the metamorphosis of the business and where I am right now, Indigo Tones, empowering you to wear color, is I'm giving 
people all of the tools that they need to know who they really are, distinct from anybody else. You know, you're not going to wear your colors the same way that somebody else who's a dark winter would. But helping you to understand who you are, explore the things that you love so that every time you go to that closet, you're not overwhelmed by, oh, I don't really like anything. I don't know what to wear. I don't feel confident. So that you have a whole host of things in there that you do love, that you are excited to wear. And then every time you step out the door, you're wearing something that you absolutely love. And I'm talking about, you know, for me, it's the clothes I wear to, you know, go on a walk. It's the clothes I wear to do yoga. It's the, it's the things I wear to lay around the house. It's the things I wear all the time. I'm always, I always feel like me. I always feel like I know that I look like myself and I feel confident being myself. I'm not trying to look like anybody else. I don't want any one of my clients to look like anybody else because who we are naturally is the most beautiful version of ourselves. Whether you're a male or a female or what, you know, any, it doesn't matter. We all have this, this part of us that is natural that's the best expression of who we are. And that's what I really try to help people to tap into so they can be confident in doing that. And, and you also mentioned, you know, casual, like go yoga and stuff like that. I think that it's important to have the color discipline as I would call it in, in all phases, you know, as opposed to that there's a temptation to kind of really back off to be comfortable, but you can be comfortable and still be in your own colors. And therefore, absolutely. And the other thing that I hear a lot now, again, back in the back in the eighties, when I was in human resources, we did a lot of dress for success types of training and seminars and that kind of thing. And one of the things that I really, really work with with my clients is this idea that well, I wear this type of clothes for work, and I wear this type of clothes when I'm comfortable. And what I do is we integrate all of that. You shouldn't really ever be putting something on you that isn't inherently who you are. And you know, no matter what profession you're in, except if you have to wear you know a, a uniform or scrubs or something like that, um, which you know we, there's still ways around that a little bit too. But no matter what profession you're in, you can honor your colors and your style without having to feel that. You have to look a certain way just to fit into that profession. And so it's a very, very, very um, holistic, integrated way of approaching having a wardrobe that works that's very, very simple. I mean, you really need a lot less than you think you do. Yeah, I found that. And also I can see my clothes now. <laughs> Last right? eight years, it's been great. The other part of this, and this is kind of an aha moment for me, is that in terms of getting out of your own way, I think people may not realize that if they're not in color harmony, that may be preventing them from moving forward. So is that something that you found? Absolutely. I mean, absolutely. Over and over and over again, people will say to me, you know, how did you, how did you realize that you wanted to do this business? And it was, it goes back to that, you know, when somebody's, when somebody is off, there's just, it's like, it's like a, it's like listening to music. That's just a little bit off. I had the great pleasure of uh, participating and, and being involved in a beauty pageant last summer, the United States uh, beauty pageant. And what I was aware of sitting, watching the women come across the stage was the women that were in harmony with their colors and they were dressed in styles that suited them appeared to me to know themselves better. They appeared to be um, more intelligent. They, they appeared to really get themselves. And I remembered sitting there how I made the same assumptions when I was interviewing people for high level corporate jobs, same thing. And I know that I, um, I have over, over and over and over again, people will tell me, oh, you know, I, I saw this person, like you, you actually told me a story about this this morning. You saw somebody who you could tell she looked great. She looked in harmony with her colors and you almost can't help yourself from being drawn to that person. Mm -hmm. And when something is disharmonious, whether it's music or food or whatever it is, we're repelled from it. 
And so harmony brings us closer to it and wants us to know more, wants us to get to know the person, makes us think that we're connected to that person and disharmony repels us. Mm -hmm. And so I found that was really sort of the impetus for me getting involved in the business, but also really because I inherently believed and I was shocked by the amount of waste, the amount of clothes that oh. I had that didn't work for me, the amount of clothes that people I knew had that didn't work for me and how buying, 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 buying more and more and more and more just didn't, didn't, didn't fix the problem. And so there were a, this, this journey and having this business, the way I got out of my own way was really for me to tap into what are my goals personally, professionally, as it relates to the environment, as it relates to, you know, a creative way of expressing myself. And so all of the environmental impacts of, of understanding all of this and saving ourselves from a lot of waste is hugely important to me too. Yeah. And you've done, and, and everybody, everybody says that has the colors there ha has their colors done is that the feeling confident is absolutely the number one thing and simplifying their closets, but how much less they really need and how they don't shop. They, they shop simply now they shop easily. Now they love the things that they have now, you know, that's a very, very key part of all of this. Yeah, I'm glad you brought that up because I think a lot of people do care about the environment and want to find ways to support it, but may not realize they can look in their own closet to do that, you know, because textiles and fabrics, it, it, it takes a lot of resources to make like a pair of jeans, for example, like that's, it's insane. So if you're more thoughtful and uh, scrutinizing about what you, what you pick, and it's easier for you to do so because you know your colors, you're going to have less of a carbon footprint, which is wonderful. You know, and I have this one gray skirt that I purchased for a hundred dollars about six years ago. And it's a knit skirt that I wear in the winter. And I, I wear it all the time in my studio. I, I wear it over and over and over again because I see different people every day. That one skirt that I invested a hundred dollars in, I've worn well over a hundred times. I mean, easily. I don't need I don't need a lot of other skirts, you know. And when I travel a lot, I actually um, you know, before COVID, I traveled a lot to do color analysis. And when I travel, I can take a little bag and have everything I need in it because everything goes with everything else. So the simplicity involved here is, is, is beyond what you can even imagine. Yeah. Well, you mentioned COVID. So I want to ask you about your business so you can get a chance to tell us how you had to pivot and some exciting things that are coming up in the new year. Well, one of the things, you know, I, I, I manufacture my own swatch books and I do have my own line of botanically based, um, very, very non-toxic cosmetics. I also offer uh, my clients some gently used and new clothing in all shapes and sizes and colors on my website. And so one of the beautiful things about the way that the business has evolved is that I've got clients all over the world. I mean, I shipped a swatch book to Finland yesterday and it's just it's so exciting that to have clients everywhere. And unfortunately with COVID, um, the travel, my travel has just been completely stopped since, since March when, when things really hit. And what I've, but what I've realized is I continue to get requests from people to have a personal color analysis who don't live here in Rochester, New York. I've, I've got lots, thousands of people here in Rochester who've had their colors done. And I have done the colors of people all over the United States. But what I've realized is I really want to bring color analysis to more people. And so I've made the decision that I am going to move my uh, uh, studio, which I've been in for 16 years in Pittsburgh, New York. I'm gonna move that closer to my home, which is in the city of Rochester, New York. And it's gonna be about the same size studio, but it's gonna be a little bit more convenient for me. And then I'm going to actually create, I've, I'm in the process of creating a traveling studio nice. where I can hit the road and I can, I, you know, my goal is to travel safely, you know, not have to fly, not have to stay in hotels to be able to travel safely and travel all over the continental United States as soon as possible. Um, and really, really bring color analysis to 
maybe the clients who've purchased my makeup or purchased swatch books or people that have found me in various places. I mean, I get requests nearly every single day from somebody asking, can you please come here? We don't have anyone in mm. you know, my, my town. So I'm so, so, so excited wow. to be working on that. Well, that's wonderful. And for, for those of you who are watching and in the U.S., you might get to see Carrie in person and outside the U.S. Carrie's also been doing a lot of work, as you, as you mentioned, you just you ship something overseas. So really, wherever you are, you can get color analysis support from Carrie. So I definitely encourage you to check that out. And I think at this point, we're going to have to wrap up. And so I'm going to invite Carrie to maybe suggest, based on our conversation today, a single action the audience should take. Well, I, I usually tell my clients at the end of a color analysis that I, or, or when I speak to a group of people who haven't had their colors done, like, like your audience, that one of the, the, the first steps to really kind of exploring who you are and what you like is to go into your own closet and pull out maybe 10 things that you absolutely love. You love something about them. And, and, and start to create a little bit of a collection. What is it about them that you love? Is it, is it the color? Is it the, is it the way that it fits you? Is it the style? Do, does everything that you love have a little asymmetry to it? Or does it have some crispness to it or, or something about it? What are those things that you really love? And start to identify those things and start to think about doing more of of what you really love. And then identify the things that are there that you never wear, that they're just there because somebody gave them to you or you got them on sale and they just don't resonate with you at all. And sort of put those to another side and then really, really pay attention to kind of some of the things that you love and what is it about that. And that's usually a good starting place for getting used to understanding that this isn't about what's in fashion or what's on sale, it's about you. And if you start with you, that will open up a whole lot of pathways to exploring where to go from there. Excellent. I highly endorse that. And it's fun exercise. I think it was fun. So I love that single action. Everybody should do that. And also you are offering a free gift. Would you like to tell us about that? Sure. It's really difficult to do a free gift because I, everything I offer, I want for my clients, I want people to use what's perfect for them in their colors. Mm -hmm. But I do have, um, I do have a document that has some really, really simple tips that you can use for makeup on your face. And, and the goal with putting anything on your face is to create balance and harmony. And so with using color and a minimal amount of makeup, if you do these simple tips, it will actually open up your eyes. It will diminish things. It will, it will create balance and harmony with color. And you don't have to know your colors to utilize these tips. They're tips that will work universally. Um, you'll, you'll have to reference your own eye color and some other things about yourself but you won't, it, it, they will be more universal tips. So they're just a few simple things you can do. You don't have to spend any, a lot of money or anything like that. Um, and that will be available um, in the link that, okay. that you, can, you can just access as a, um, as a download. Awesome. Thanks, Carrie. And how can people keep in touch with you so they know where you are all, all over when you, especially when you're traveling in your, in your business? Well, I mean, I have, I have a lot of content on my indigotones.com website right now. There's lots and lots and lots of content on there, but I am going to be expanding the offerings that I have on my Instagram, Indigo Tones Instagram, on my Facebook page, on my YouTube channel. As I move around and travel around the country, I will be vlogging on the YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. I do put a lot of my products up on Pinterest and they're organized by the seasons and things like that. So social media, Pinterest, Facebook, Instagram, definitely great ways to, you know, check out the products and check out some of the concepts that I talk about. My actual website has so much content. And then, you know, I'm really looking forward to spending some time vlogging and, and sharing with people on the, when I get, when I hit the road and in the spring. 
No, oh, that's a great, great use of a vlog is having you your travel tales and doing everyone's colors. So I think that's going to be a great way to follow through and uh, keep in touch with you. So thank you for that, Carrie. And thank you for everything you shared today. Thank you, Stephanie. It was a real pleasure. I'm what? really looking forward to seeing the whole series. Yes, great. And thank you everyone for joining us. Please make sure you do check out the other speakers to get more insights about how to get out of your own way. I also invite you to join my free Facebook group for Ambitious Accountability Ambassadors. I hope to see you there. Take care. Thank you.